This section is covering significant digits. Now we've talked a lot about how to measure correctly um, to make sure we have the digits we're certain of and then some uncertain digits. So this is basically what significant digits are. Okay, So we have to take careful measurements because it becomes really, really important to be precise. Okay, Especially when you start doing calculations. So most of the time you're going to have to complete calculations with the measurements that you get. So here, if we look, actual measurements are usually only taken to one or two decimal places. So here we've got 3.0 and we've got 1.00. So here, we divide this and we get this crazy answer. Okay, We can't know all these decimal places. That's not possible. So we have to know how to round and use correct number of significant digits. So again, a significant digit is anything that you measure. has physical meaning. Okay, So the real purpose, purpose of significant digits is to know how many places to record for your calculations. Okay, So we, know how, we have to know how to count these. These are all the different rules. Okay, All measured numbers are significant. So if you measure them, they're significant. If they're not a zero, they're significant. If you have zeros in the middle of a measurement, they're significant. Zeros at the end, if there's a decimal, are significant because they wouldn't be there unless you measured them. Leading zeros or zeros that come before are not significant. Okay, So that's a lot of rules. So here's how it works. Here's a zero in the middle. It is significant because if it wasn't there it would totally change the measurement. This is a trailing zero after a decimal place. We wouldn't write point zero unless we were estimating that digit. Okay, So that would not be there unless we were estimating that digit. Leading zeros here are only placeholders. They're there just because this measurement is going to be smaller than a tenth. So they're just there to hold the place. They don't count as part of the measurement. Okay, So we can kind of just sum those two, three, four rules up in um, Two. If there's no decimal point in the number, count from the first non-zero number to the last non-zero number. So if we have a number like this, okay, we're going to be moving from right to left. You don't start counting till you get to the first number that's not a zero, and then you count everything you have left. If there is a decimal point, so like this, okay. You go from left to right. Don't start counting till you get to the first number that's not a zero. And then you have to count everything from that number until you run out of digits. So if we look here, we would have one, two significant figures. Here we would have one, two, three significant figures. Those are the easiest two numbers to remember. No decimal, you go right to left. Start counting when you get to the first number that's not a zero. Count till you run out of numbers. When you do have a decimal, you go from left to right. Start counting when you get to the first number that's not a zero and count until you run out. So that's how we count significant figures. Okay, So if we look here, one, two, three, they're all non-zeros. They have to count. Here, there's a zero in the middle. It has to count. If we have no decimal place, we're going from right to left. So we do not count this zero. We start at the seven and we count from here over. So that gives us four. Same here, no decimal place, so we're going right to left. Start counting at the first number that's not a zero. Sorry about that. And there's only one, the number two. Here, if we're going from right to left, we start at the five, and we count the one and the five. Okay, so that's how to use those rules. And that's just a review of what we just went through. Okay, if there is a decimal point, I want you to pause your video, write down what you think the answers are for these. <coughs> okay, now the rule this time is you're going from left to right. You don't start counting till you get to the first number that's not a zero. Count till you run out. So here we have three. Here we have three. Here we have four. And here we don't count these first two. We start counting at the two and we have four significant figures. So check your answers with the answers here. 
and make sure you agree. Again, they show you here exactly which ones you count. And don't start counting until you get to the numbers that are not zeros, and then you have to count until you run out of numbers. Okay, so those trailing zeros, just because the zero isn't significant doesn't mean it's not important and you don't have to write it. Okay, so here, for example, if we have 250 meters, that is not the same as 25. So you can't just drop a zero and not have it there. Okay, the zero not being significant just tells us that it's in within a range. That if it's 250, it's somewhere between 240 and 260. So again, if we drop that zero, it totally changes what we're dealing with. Now, if we put a zero behind it, that means we measured or estimated this last digit. So we know that it's right on 250. It's somewhere between 149, excuse me, 249 and 251. So there's a big difference between this 250 and this 250. Here, this is a placeholder. Here, we've estimated that digit, so we know it's much closer than this range here. Okay, again, pause your video and write down your answers of how many significant figures there are in each one of these measurements. And again, here are your answers. Whole number, we're going from right to left, so you go this direction and count. Decimal, we're going left to right, get to the two and count. Decimal, again, left to right, so we count all four. Non-decimal, right to left, so you start at the four. And decimal again, going left to right, so you count all your digits. That is where we're going to stop for today.